And we have to rely on sources that provide information. Uh, and sometimes those sources are reliable, and frankly, sometimes those sources are not reliable. In which event, we have to check and double check that information with other sources. Uh, sometimes it's human intelligence, sometimes it's technical intelligence in order to determine whether or not that information is reliable. Sometimes you can't check that information, in which event when you present it to the president and to the leaders of the country, you've got to say we have low confidence that this is accurate information. And I think looking back on the weapons of mass destruction issue in uh, Iraq, I think that while everybody had come to the conclusion that those weapons were there, that they were present, that in reality, when you looked at the sources of the information, frankly, it, was, it should have been presented on the basis of low confidence to the president. That never happened. And I think, uh, obviously, a price was paid for that. But uh, what, what we are trying to do, learning those lessons, is to make sure that every time we present information, we, we make very clear that we either have low confidence, we have mid-confidence, or we have high confidence in that information so that the President and others understand the value of the information that we're presenting to them. Technology is obviously a way to try to uh, improve the reliability of intelligence, the development of new technologies, and so on. And there are a whole variety of questions. Uh, several of them deal with um, InQtel, the yes. uh, venture capital firm, essentially, of the CIA investing in the data mining software company Visible Technologies. Are CIA departments mining U.S. Internet data, similar to the Defense Department? Uh, current story in Wired Magazine about the new software Visible to monitor Internet blogs and other websites. Do you think this is necessary and why? Well, again, there are, there are laws here that have to be abided by. In FISA, uh, the, uh, the law that's Foreign Intelligence Security Act, I believe is what it stands for, uh, requires that, uh, that w when those efforts are made, that uh, permission has to be provided by the FISA court. Most of that, I have to say, is within the realm of NSA, not uh, the CIA. We, we don't do anything uh, within the country that involves that kind of effort. Now, abroad, we do, uh, particularly when it comes to al-Qaeda and others who may use uh, uh, laptops who use cell phones, uh, we are able to go after that kind of information. Uh, that's a reality. Those of you that have cell phones and laptops, be very careful <laughs> because, uh, I mean, there, the, the technology is there to be able to do that. And uh, in Pakistan, for example, even as we speak, if somebody, uh, you know, is, is making a cell phone call and uh, is at the same time planning to, uh, uh, to conduct a, a a suicide attack, uh, we have means of trying to uh, locate that individual so that we can hopefully prevent that. So there are, there, there are advanced technologies here to be able to uh, help protect the country, but those technologies and those capabilities ought clearly to be used in accordance with our laws. You listed the four challenges uh, and all of them have threats associated with them, um, whether it is uh, the unexpected uh, political developments in Latin America or cyber, ter or cyber terrorism, or, uh, et cetera. There were, the list of threats would have been quite different 10 years ago, and several people would like to know, for instance, what about China in terms of its competition? Is it a threat from the intelligence point of view? What about Russia? Is it a threat both vis-a-vis -vis Europe and the path of oil, Georgia, and so on? So what about what's not on your list uh, in terms of attention uh, from the CIA? Well, again, uh, let me emphasize that fourth area that uh, involves our, our global, that global arena that we have to continue to focus on. Yes, we're focusing on counterterrorism, al-Qaeda, uh, and those who would threaten our country. Uh, yes, we're fo focusing on counterproliferation uh, and those who are involved in spreading weapons of mass destruction. Yes, we are focusing on cybersecurity because of the number of uh, attacks that we're confronting here and abroad. 
But we also have to be aware of what else is happening in the global world that we live in. And for that reason, we cannot avoid uh, the responsibility to continue to gather information uh, in other areas. We continue to gather information, obviously, on Russia. Russia remains uh, a very important uh, country uh, in the world, one that we uh, continue to, uh, to deal with uh, diplomatically, uh, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. Uh, but we need to know, uh, you know, what are they thinking? We need to know what are their plans? We need to know, you know, what are, uh, what are their thoughts in terms of uh, being able to uh, develop uh, either energy resources or relationships with uh, countries in that part of the world. It's an extremely important target for us. Same thing is true for China. China is now a very strong economic uh, partner in many ways. And yet at the same time, uh, we have to be concerned uh, about uh, you know, what, are, what are they working on? What are they planning? What are their leaders thinking in terms of their approaches? So we continue to, uh, to uh, have that as a, a target that we look at. We continue to look at, uh, at other countries, as I mentioned, uh, particularly countries like Yemen and Somalia uh, that could be potential safe havens for Al Qaeda. Uh, sometimes uh, the tendency is to ignore those countries but I can tell you that those countries that, uh, you know, that have serious problems uh, are the countries that al-Qaeda can find roots in, and we've got to deal with that. We've got to deal with a country like Venezuela and the, uh, you know, the potential threat that it represents in terms of our relationship with Latin America. We have to deal with a country, I mean, we are now in the effort of trying to develop better relations with Cuba. We need to develop better information about what's happening in Cuba, something, frankly, we have not had uh, as effectively as we should. Uh, we need to uh, be able to understand Mexico. Mexico is now dealing with a horrific uh, drug problem that we're involved with. We've got to understand what's going on there because it, it clearly impacts on our country and on our security. Uh, country after country, Malaysia, Indonesia, Burma, uh, that part of the world, African countries, uh, Kenya, uh, and, and other countries there that uh, represent uh, potential problems for the future. We have got to have our people there knowing what's going on so that, as I said, this country is not surprised. That's the responsibility of the CIA. And, and I have to tell you, one of the problems we often have is that you, know, you have priorities that everyone's focusing on. Those are the crises of the moment. What I've got to make sure is that we are also paying attention to those areas that may not be a crisis now, but could potentially be a crisis in the future. If you can say here, where is the economic pinch felt most? Where do you most regret not being able to put more resources, if you can say? To, to be frank, uh, the intelligence budget has done pretty well uh, since 9-11. I don't, you know, I, <laughs> again, I put on my uh, director of OMB hat, <laughs> having been on that side. Um, but I, I, have to, uh, I have to say that, uh, uh, obviously, uh, every time there is a, a supplemental appropriation that's going on on Capitol Hill in dealing with... Uh, particularly the war zones and, the, uh, and those areas where we're in conflict, uh, that the intelligence community is, has always been able to uh, draw adequate resources, more than adequate resources, to deal with the, uh, the issues that we're dealing with. And we continue to get uh, strong support from the Congress. Uh, we get very strong support in all of those areas that I just described. And, and I am particularly happy that I'm getting strong support with regards to language training and with regards to our effort to push greater diversity uh, within the CIA. Having said that, as I remind uh, the people who are heads of their directorates at the CIA uh, and headquarters uh, individuals, that as, as a former chair of the Budget Committee and as director of OMB, uh, this country cannot continue to run uh, trillion dollar deficits. Uh, we're now looking at in excess of one trillion dollars. The likelihood is we'll go to two trillion dollar deficits. Uh, we cannot do that 
uh, and expect that we can remain a powerful nation. Uh, and the reason is, as you all know, when you run those size deficits, uh, the borrowing that we have to do around the world obviously continues to increase uh, interest pressures here at home. It makes us more dependent on those countries that are purchasing our securities, and over 50 percent of our debt is now owned abroad. Uh, in addition, it, uh, it deprives the country of the resources we need, regardless of what your priority is, whether it's defense, whether it's intelligence, whether it's education, whether it's health care, this country will not have the resources to confront the problems that we need to confront for the future. And worst of all, it raises, I think, uh, the most regressive tax of all, which is the tax on our children who have to ultimately pay the, uh, the interest on that debt. Uh, 